I'm Alan Ross, president of EPRA, and I'm also the editor-in-chief of Transformer Technology and a uh, something we'll also talk about in this world. And this is a video podcast interview. Uh, we've got Michael Cunningham, who is the COO of Kamlin. Recently on your website, I saw that you were rebranding, and I know it's, uh, you know, it's not a marketing rebranding. I think it's very important um, when you think about what Camlin is, when I think of Camlin, I think of two things, trains and transformers. So the, the double T of Camlin's because the monitoring program that you've got for, for uh, transformers and what you do in the, in the train business. But you're rebranding your, your power group there. Talk a little bit about that, what it is and why it is. Okay. Um, yes, we, we went through... Uh, a rebranding recently and the the portion of the business on the transformers, not the tree inside, changed from Canon Power to Canon Energy, which perhaps can seem a relatively minor change. The, the reason that we did that, Alan, was uh, really as the company is growing and going really from one phase to the next, from a, a smaller or medium-sized company into a slightly larger company, we recognized there was a need to restructure, refocus. We also recognized there was so much change in the industry happening. Yeah. Uh, the challenges and the opportunities in the industry over the next decade are, are uh, huge. Probably the biggest challenges, in my opinion, really since the, the beginning of the industry in its early days of inception and the, the uh, design of electrical power as a, as a, an asset to society. Now, the challenges for renewables and sustainability and, and uh, all of that that represents, how the industry is going to meet those needs is a significant change that the industry needs to take. And we believe we've got a significant role to play in that. Uh, we're very excited to do that, but in order to uh, step up to that challenge and, and work with our partners, we realized that we needed to restructure and re refocus ourselves. The Camden Energy piece, which I also run, so the, the, the CEO of the group, but also uh, head of the energy piece. So uh, I've got that uh, responsibility also. We recognize that to create that focus, to become more than just a supplier of boxes, of, of monitoring devices or DGA or partial discharge or, or circuit breaker monitoring or what have you, but providers of solutions, creators of solutions, and realizing that what really was involved here was going on a journey with customers. To be able to do that, we needed to be sure that we had all of the right layers of expertise in place and that those layers of expertise were aligned to provide that value with, I suppose, very clear vision in mind of what the industry and what our customers, what their journey over the next decade is going to be. Everything's changing, so you're exactly right. And it sounds like what Camlin is doing is changing to take advantage and positively those changes, because you know what is not changing? The confusion by the engineers in the marketplace, they're going, what is happening? And especially yeah. the older ones like me, you know what they're doing? They're saying, good luck, next generation, figure it out. How are you going to affect? I just I just said what the problem is. How are you going to affect that at Camelot Energy? What we came up with, we're here, and our purpose is to, to engineer better futures. I like that. And then our vision is, okay, well, what does that mean for as a vision for us? It's, to optimize the, infra the critical infrastructure all around us, that infrastructure on which society depends. So the, the transformers and the trains to go back to your, the T and the T. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so if we are to optimize that, and then we think, well, what are our values? And then it touches on something that you said, is one of our values is we don't accept the way it's always been done. And the phrase that we use in here, which we didn't invent, but it, 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 it resonates is, what got us here won't get us there. Right. So we recognize that, just as you touch on, the, the, the models, the methodologies, the diagnostics, the tools, the working practices that the industry is going to need in the next decade 
are not the ones that were created a decade ago. We are heavily involved in it from a couple of different angles. So obviously on the, the Camden Rail side, we're very heavily involved in uh, the, the railway industry. But if we focus primarily on, on the point you're making around the utility, the power side, there's two aspects that we're very heavily involved in. One is the networks side, um, where we've got a, a very large involved, primarily in the UK with the distribution network operators or system operators as they are now. Um, how the uh, electric vehicles and the mass uptake of electric vehicles is having a huge impact on, on the electric uh, industry and how we are working with the DNOs to create network management systems that facilitate that. Got to work in ways that simply don't exist uh, at the moment and that's something that uh, our UK team are working very, very heavily on and, and is tremendously exciting. But there's one thing that's coming, and this is this is a, a particular soapbox that I have on. My experience in the industry has been that you have networks and you've got assets and asset management. It's almost never the twain shall meet. Right. And they've got different methodologies, different languages, different. Uh, they, they use different mathematical tools to do their. One's all about the management of risk and uh, sweating capital assets, and on the other is about energy flow and, and uptime and, and so forth. And but actually, they are going to crash together yes. over the next years. Yeah. And there there are new models and new. There's new thinking required, and that's going to require a combination of uh, hardware at the cold face, both in networks and asset monitoring. It's going to require the collation of data in ways that currently, I think, is, is uh, in its infancy. The analysis of data using new tools like AI and machine learning, but crucially with the expertise, the knowledge of the assets and the knowledge of the networks, know what this data is saying. In order to understand that, over the next decade, we're going to have to, as an industry, create new models. And those models are going to have to be understood, they're going to have to be deployed, and the assets and the networks team are going to either come together in a controlled fashion, or they're going to come together in an uncontrolled fashion. But they are coming together. Our part to play is we can help because we've got the hardware, both in the networks and in the assets. We've got the, the, the data collation, the AI and machine learning, the expertise, we can create, we can work with teams on this journey, refining and improving existing models, creation of new models, uh, and then the, the new methodologies that are necessary, that journey can be taken in a controlled fashion. It's back to the old point of what got us here won't get us there. It's something that I think is one of the single most exciting and most challenging aspects of the next 10 years.